Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for coming out today to the Yellowhead Trail conversation with the City of Edmonton. Uh, my name is Andy Barnes and I'm with the AMTA. And you know what? We should have really renamed that to the Yellowhead Freeway Conversation with the City of Edmonton. So I'm, I'm going to turn it over to our friends in Edmonton in a half a second. Just as a reminder to everybody, I did mention this a few minutes ago, but this session will be recorded so we can send it out at a later date to members that were unable to attend. Um, also, um, what I'd like to do is uh, year, a few years ago, we started working with the city of Edmonton about these changes they're making. And we are now at the time to find out what the plans are. Things are going out to tender, but I won't speak too much beyond that. So I, I'd first off like to introduce Carol and Joylene from the city of Edmonton. Thank you for coming and welcome. And I will pass the presentation over to you. Carol, are you running the presentation? You're going to grab the presentation? So I'm, I'm going to run the presentation, but yeah, Andrew, and if, if anyone has any trouble, maybe flag that for me before I'm halfway through and nobody can hear or see anything. So um, thank you, Andrew, and um, uh, for organizing this event. Uh, we have actually a few member of our teams here, so I'd just like to do a quick round of introductions, although I'll be presenting. Um, we're hoping to have a few minutes at, near the end of the session for any questions, and I'm counting heavily on my team to support me in that. So I will start with my director, the director of the Yellowhead Trail Portfolio, Chris Lima. Good morning, everyone. And with us as well is Mike Bendis. He's the supervisor for delivery on the program. So he's the guy who knows everything about how this is going to be built. Good morning, everybody. Uh, with us as well is Carol Say. She is a program manager um, managing two of our major projects on the corridor. Carol? Okay. Good morning, everyone. And we have Sami El Hanawiya as well. He's a project manager supporting wherever we need him. So he's very valuable in, in just keeping us running. Sami, do you want to say hi? Thanks, Julian. Thanks, Julian. Good morning, everyone. And I am the um, supervisor for planning and design. And all of our projects are at various stages. So um, which I'll explain a little bit more in the presentation. So I will do my best to share information on what those projects are and what's the current status. And then um, I'm hoping that again, we'll have uh, enough time near the end to um, answer any questions you have. So I'll just jump in. I believe that I'm presenting my screen. Does everybody see that? They see a, a slide that says, let's talk about Yellowhead Trail. Yes, yep. we see it. Thank you. And and if anyone has any questions too, and you wanted to type them in the chat area, there's a little chat bubble up top. Type your questions in and then we'll get to them at the end as well too. My apologies for barging in there, Jolene. Oh, no, that's helpful. It's uh, a good tool and I'm, I appreciate you bringing it up. So again, um, I'm Jolene Mazura, Supervisor for Planning and Design for the Yaha Trail Portfolio. And today um, we're here to talk to you about the Yaha Trail Freeway Conversion Program. We'll talk a little bit about the background and how this program came about. We'll explain our projects within the program, including kind of the status, timelines, current and upcoming work, and then we'll have time for some questions. As I'm sure you're all aware, Yellowhead Trail is a major east-west corridor through Edmonton and an important part of the Trans-Canada Yellowhead Highway or Highway 16. Highway 16 spans the four western provinces connecting Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta and British Columbia. With that said, Yellowhead Trail in Edmonton supports provincial and interprovincial travel and goods movement. Through Edmonton, Yellowhead Trail spans about 26 kilometres of this important east-west connection. For the most part, the corridor is fully developed on both sides of the right of way. We have a mix of light industrial and residential land uses. We have the Beachmont Cemetery, CN Walker Yard for quite a, a span on the north side of Yellowhead Trail. 
And we have um, residential, new residential development, the Blatchford Redevelopment or the Old City Centre Airport. And the road itself looks very different in along along the link through Edmonton. There are various access, access points along the corridor, and they range from full system interchanges with Anthony Henday Drive to more urban interchanges like 97th Street, to signalized intersections like 66th Street, 149th Street, unsignalized intersections where we could just have some areas where we just have left turn bays into a service road. We even have alleys and private driveways that still connect to Yellowhead Trail. If you can think of it, you can find that type of access on Yellowhead Trail. <laughs> so as you can see by the slide I'm showing now, there's been a lot of work to make Yellowhead Trail a freeway over the last several, several years, decades even. And um, the timeline on the screen gives you a bit of an idea of when those major milestones were reached. Um, from the functional planning study in the 70s, we proceeded to begin the work that would make Yellowhead Trail a freeway, starting with Victoria Trail um, and the Santa Rosa CNR underpass in the, in the late 70s, all the way to the most recent interchange construction, which was 156th Street in 2005. At present, Yellowhead Trail is one of the busiest roadways in Edmonton. Current traffic volumes range from 60 to 88,000 vehicles per day. Over the last 10 years, an average of 1,000 collisions occurred annually on Yellowhead Trail, and several of those intersections that I, that I described earlier are within Edmonton's top 10 collision locations. Traffic demand along this corridor is anticipated to grow as development in and around Edmonton continues. And projections tell us that traffic can be expected to almost double over the next few decades to volumes of upward of 155,000 vehicles a day. And we do know as well that trucks form a large portion of traffic along Yellowhead Trail. Of the total daily traffic, between 12 and 15% of that are trucks using the corridor for the movement of goods. This means that upwards of 12,000 trucks per day are currently using Yellowhead Trail within Edmonton. Now, with all that being said, let's not forget that this is a roadway that you can still access through a back alley near 66th Street and private crossings on various points of the corridor. On December 16th, 2016, the Government of Canada and the Government of Alberta joined the City of Edmonton to announce joint funding for improving Yellowhead Trail. The federal and provincial governments are each contributing uh, up to around $242 million, with the City of Edmonton providing the remaining portion of funding for a total of a $1 billion project. The overall freeway conversion program is anticipated to be complete by the end of 2027. With that funding in place, that long awaited vision from as early as the 70s of Yellowhead Trail becoming a freeway is becoming a reality. This does mean that there's significant planning, design, public engagement, land acquisition and utility work that has to take place. These activities began um, in earnest once funding was secured and will continue on the various projects depending on which phase they're in, until 2027. To facilitate its completion, the Yellowhead Trail Freeway Conversion Program has been split up into a number of smaller projects, taking into consideration the level of design currently completed, shovel readiness, the land acquisition status, and the degree of impact for the main line. So our program does run from 156th Street all the way to the North Saskatchewan River. Let's look at the details now for each of those areas. Our first project segment is 156th Street to St. Albert Trail, and this includes the intersections of 149th Street and 142nd Street, which will be closed as part of the program. Access to Yellowhead Trail will be at the nearest interchanges at 156th Street and St. Albert Trail, or via um, ramps or transfer lanes that connect to parallel service roads that run on the north side and south side of Yellowhead Trail. 
the concept for this, this area, so the idea of what it looks like, was completed in 2015. And when funding was announced, uh, we worked to um, get a consultant on board to start the details of design. So this work started in 2019, and you can see the result of that on your screen. It's a bit of a diagram, it's a little small, but this can also be found online where you can zoom in and see the details. So I'll walk you through a little bit. If you're heading eastbound on Yellowhead Trail, you can access the interchange at 156 Street in the same place you normally would using that eastbound off ramp that connects you to 123rd Avenue. Um, as you continue, I'm sorry, Andrew was. I'll just I'm going, to, I'm going to mute everybody and then just okay. unmute yourself, uh, Julian. Sure. All right. Um, and again, uh, I recommend if you have a question, please make note of it in the chat box um, and we'll do our best to answer those at the end of the presentation. We can always come back and look at something a little more closely as well. So as you proceed along Yellowhead Trail eastbound, there will be an exit point before you get to 149th Street, which is similar to that right turn onto 149th Street today. That exit point is where you will get on to the new eastbound service road, which will allow you access to 149th Street and all of the businesses on the south side of Yellowhead Trail as well as access to 142nd Street. As you um, pass 142nd Street, you get to another decision point where you can enter Yellowhead Trail directly before you get to the St. Albert Trail interchange, or you can continue on the ramp to the St. Albert Trail interchange if you'd like to go north and south on St. Albert Trail or turn around and go in the westbound direction. So I'll just quickly describe the westbound movement as well. Moving westbound on Yellowhead Trail, if you want to get to St. Albert Trail, you will have to get on to, um, you will have to exit at 127th Street and follow a service road to get to St. Albert Trail. If you're on Yellowhead Trail traveling, if you've stayed on Yellowhead Trail and, are, and continue to travel westbound, there's a decision point or an exit um, west of the St. Albert Trail interchange where you can enter that westbound service road to access properties on the north side. There's a second exit point where you can again, um, if you've passed that first exit, you can enter um, Yellowhead Trail or sorry, the Yellowhead Trail service road, the westbound service road on the north side of Yellowhead Trail. And that second access point is near 149th Street. That service road will provide access to all of the businesses on the north side of Yellowhead Trail to 149th Street as well as 151st Street and eventually lead you to um, nearer the west end of the project area to another decision point where if you're on the service road you can choose to enter Yellowhead Trail before you get to the interchange um, itself or you continue, you can continue westbound to the 156th Street interchange. We will, uh, so our website does have some very great videos to describe how those movements are made, as well as a, a detailed map, um, that it, this detailed map, which you can zoom in on if you want to see it in more detail. I'll move on now to the St. Albert Trail to 97th Street um, project area. So this project area was in the earliest stages of the process where when the funding was announced, we didn't have a concept plan in place. We had no picture of what this would look like. Concept planning was initiated in 2019 and will be complete in April of this year. So that's an 18 month study to figure out what Yellowhead Trail will look like in this area. The final concept plan includes a new interchange at 127th Street and a new interchange at 115th Street. There is a connection from 107th Street to the new 115th Street interchange. 121 Street will also connect to the new 115th Street interchange. 
New service roads will manage the flow of traffic into um, the uh, business areas on the north side and between St. Albert Trail and 127th Street. And so I'll quickly describe those movements. If you're heading eastbound on Yellowhead Trail and you would like to get to 127th Street, you can take a ramp, an exit ramp just before the, one, the new 127th Street Bridge and continue north and south. This is an all directional diamond type of interchange where you have ramps in every direction. Um, you can also therefore get from 127th Street on to Yellowhead Trail on an eastbound ramp. If you're continuing eastbound on Yellowhead Trail, you can exit at 115th Street. And then of course, either go on 121st Street. Sorry, I jumped ahead in my presentation. Or you can use uh, get to 107th Street. You can cross the bridge at that interchange location and use a service road on the north side, which passes the CN rail access and allows you access into the Hegman East, what we call the Hegman Industrial East area. And those are the changes and movements for the eastbound direction. If you're traveling in the westbound direction, you would you can choose to exit Yellowhead Trail at the 115th Street interchange, again, to get to 107th Street, 121 Street, or the industrial area west, sorry, east of 127th Street. You can also, if you're in those areas, get onto Yellowhead Trail using the interchange and the um, on-ramp to Yellowhead Trail. If you're, again, if you're traveling westbound beyond that point, you can get onto 127th Street using um, the exit ramp. And this would allow you an alternate, alternate way to enter the area east of 127th Street, but does allow you um, also to use the new service road to access the properties on the north side of Yellowhead Trail west of 127th Street, as well as to access the St. Albert Trail interchange. So that's kind of a basic description of what the concept planning study has determined for the St. Albert Trail to 97th Street area. We're not making modifications to the 97th Street interchange itself. In the area between 97th Street and 82nd Street, um, we have completed the road work in this area. We um, removed the signals at 89th Street and made some modifications at the interchanges to help support truck turning movements into the Delton um, industrial area on the north side. You also notice on your screen some uh, concept images or renderings of a new noise wall project where we, we will be replacing the noise wall on the south side of Yellowhead Trail in the future, which may have some impacts on, on the roadway itself. Um, through construction. Um, we haven't tendered that, so we don't know the details of that um, potential impact at this moment. Um, construction will start this summer and be completed in 2022. Moving on to the area between 66th Street and approximate, approximately 61st Street. The concept plan, so again, that picture of what's gonna happen in this segment, was completed in February 2020, and it includes a partial interchange at 66th Street. So what will happen in this area is if you're driving on Yellowhead Trail eastbound, you will no longer be able to make that left turn or right turn directly onto 66th Street. You will pass underneath a new bridge. Um, if you're traveling westbound on Yellowhead Trail, we will continue to maintain the 61st Street westbound connection to make a right in, and also to come out of that industrial area and get onto Yellowhead Trail westbound. You can, you will be able to continue along a new industrial collector road, which will connect you to 66th Street. Apologize again, I'm clicking too often. And you can make the decision at 66th Street to go north or south, or to come southbound on 66th Street and enter the industrial areas 
Um, of course, the residential area will have access as well. Um, south of 122nd Avenue, you'll be able to get back into that industrial area. We recognize that the interchange at 66th Street, the only ramp connection it has will be an eastbound on-ramp. So again, if you're in these industrial areas and you'd like to travel eastbound on Yellowhead Trail, you would access that new interchange using 66th Street and be able to enter Yellowhead Trail eastbound on the new ramp. As I mentioned, we do see and know that not all the directions of travel can be accommodated at 66th Street. It's just too close to the, uh, the underpass at the rail line. We can't get ramps in, but we do, um, we, we can suggest alternate routes using the Fort Road interchange and connecting to the new 125 Avenue that will bring you into the area or again, using that westbound connection at 61st Street. And I'll just provide a bit of a different view. This is a bit of an artist rendering, uh, a conceptual view of what that new interchange will look like. And here we're just looking at it um, in a bit of a southwest direction where Yellowhead Trail um, Eastbound comes from the right side of the page to the left side of the page, and Yellowhead Trail westbound comes from the left side of the page towards the right side of the page. And that shows the 60, the new 66th Street overpass or bridge over Yellowhead Trail. Now I'll talk a little bit about some of those changes I mentioned when I was describing what's happening at 66th Street that are really supporting the changes at 66th Street. Knowing that um, there will be more traffic now that we'll have to choose to use Fort Road, we are widening Fort Road between Yellowhead Trail and 66th Street. This means that instead of four lanes of traffic, there will be six lanes of traffic. There will be a new connection, uh, 125 Avenue from about 71 Street all the way across and back down to 61 Street at Yellowhead Trail. There will be um, a widened CN bridge over those new lanes of Fort Road. And we recognize the challenges with the clearance at the Fort Road CN underpass and are lowering Fort Road to improve those clearances to current standard. The work will include some changes at 66th Street. Um, Knowing we'll have to tie into project work further south as you approach Yellowhead Trail, there is a transition area north of 66th Street, and we'll, we will reach um, kind of a status quo location or where the road, we don't expect any road changes just before the CN underpass at 66th Street. So I'm just um, sharing here, uh, again, this is definitely the artist's rendering of that new underpass at Fort Road. This is looking northbound, um, but again, the clearance will be improved to meet current standards for clearances for large trucks. Our last project within the freeway conversion program is between 61st Street and the North Saskatchewan River. This is the one segment of Yellowhead Trail that um, before the program started was four lanes, so two lanes in each direction. One of the goals of the Yellowhead Trail Freeway Conversion Program was to create a free flowing corridor with three lanes in each direction. And so for this segment of Yellowhead Trail, that meant widening between just west of 50th Street to the North Saskatchewan River to provide six lanes of travel or three in each direction. The Victoria Trail interchange is being reconfigured to improve the safety of the eastbound merge onto Yellowhead Trail. Let me show you what that looks like. Today, if you're traveling on Victoria Trail and you're coming northbound, you can use a ramp, and I'm not sure if everyone can see, but it's a northbound to eastbound ramp, which allows you to get on to Yellowhead Trail before you reach the bridge. With the addition of a lane on Yellowhead Trail, that ramp, in conjunction with the current loop ramp, 
those merges are too close together. And so we've created this alternative that you can see in this image and I'll describe. Northbound traffic on Yellowhead Trail that would like to travel eastbound will approach the interchange and make a left turn to get on to the loop ramp, which will then take them eastbound. Now this is very similar to the interchange at 156th Street today, where if you'd like to travel eastbound, you, you make that left turn at the loop ramp to enter Yellowhead Trail. This will be in place um, until such time as the river bridges are widened and we will re-explore whether adding this um, eastbound ramp in its ori original alignment can be done at that time. It's not currently part of the Yellowhead Trail for rate conversion program to widen those river bridges. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about where each of these projects is um, and the current status. As shown in the, in the schedule that you see on your screen right now, we do have our, all of our projects in various phases of planning and design. Work on the program will continue through to the end of 2027. And we've set these timelines in order to meet that funding deadline, but also in our best efforts to avoid construction fatigue. We might be leapfrogging a little bit around the, around Yellowhead Trail, but wanted to ensure we weren't doing all of the construction on the main line at the same time. So again, starting in the West End, you can see the 156th Street to St. Albert Trail project. Our design is complete and we're, we're in our tender phase right now. We expect that construction contract to be awarded in April. And construction will occur from 2021 to 2023. We did have some other improvements in the area, recognizing the challenges of those east-west movements during construction. And with the closure of 149th Street and 142 Street, we recognized that some of those parallel industrial roads may, may gain more traffic and so made some changes on 123rd Avenue, 124th Avenue, and 125th, one, sorry, 128th Avenue over the last few years, which you may have seen if you were driving in this area. Those improvements, those changes are complete. The St. Albert Trail to 97th Street project, as I mentioned, is in its earliest phases. Um, we will be complete concept planning uh, this year in April, and we'll move directly into preliminary and detailed design, which will allow us to tender the project uh, at the beginning of 2023 to start construction. And this is a construction period that may be between four and five years, as you can see on the program schedule. I mentioned replacing the noise wall between 97th Street and Fort Road. I also mentioned um, the tendering will occur this year with construction for the next couple of years. This project on the schedule, the 125A Avenue, that describes that Delton area service road and 89th street work that was completed um, in 2019 um, with some other um, some just minor concrete cleanup that occurred past year the fort road widening project where i described um, widening fort road between yellowhead trail and 93 and 66th street as well as construction of the new 125th avenue that is in the same, we're on the same timeline for that work as we are for our 156th Street to St. Albert Trail work with our design complete. The tender is out and we expect construction to begin in 2021. The 66th Street overpass, uh, we will start into our preliminary detailed design this year. And we expect construction, um, the latest to begin in 2024. We expect it should be around two years of construction. Of course, if we can sneak in a few um, uh, utility relocations earlier than that, we will attempt to do so. Um, but we do expect that our construction timeline is approximately uh, around 2024, 2025. And the East Widening Project, uh, as many of you probably saw, we did start construction on that East Widening Project last year. And we expect construction um, to be complete this year. So that was actually really a quick overview of our program. Um, 
I appreciate your patience as I kind of slogged my way through. And at this point, we'd be quite happy to answer um, questions. Awesome, thanks. We've got a few right now in the chat window. Why don't we have a look at those first, if that's okay, Jolene? Sounds uh, good. So first question came in, how many uh, lanes are the new service roads? So Jolene, maybe I'll, I'll jump in here to give your voice a rest. Um, yeah, thanks for presenting in such such detail. That was really helpful. Um, I'm wondering if maybe the, you could share, um, I believe the question popped up during um, the discussion on St. Albert Trail to 97th Street. Um, and it's a little easier to answer for pointing at a map, but um, as you're doing so, uh, between 156th Street and St. Albert Trail for that project, <coughs> excuse me, um, the service roads are uh, two lanes. Uh, on the south side of Yellowhead Trail, it is two lanes in the eastbound direction. And on the north side of Yellowhead Trail, it's two lanes in the westbound direction. So that's for the 156th Street project. Um, and Jolene's just zooming in on that now. So those service roads are two lanes, um, one way. For the St. Albert Trail to 97th Street project, it varies a little bit more. Um, if we were to take a look at the section between St. Albert Trail and 127th Street, on the south side of Yellowhead Trail, so the connection between St. Albert Trail and 127th Street eastbound, that's a single lane service road um, and it joins uh, and as you can see as as the arrow travels along eastbound um, the off the exit from the yellowhead trail kind of joins up with the service road um, right around that cross section aa um, to connect to 127th street so that's a single lane in the eastbound direction on the north side on the north side of yellowhead trail within the same I guess within the same section, I was gonna show between 127th Street and St. Albert Trail. That's a two lane service road in the westbound direction. Um, we are exploring whether or not um, a third lane would help with access to those individual businesses. Um, and we haven't confirmed, what we were looking at is um, because of the number of accesses along that stretch, by the time, if we were to add, for, for example, a uh, right turn bay, um, to help uh, trucks make that right turn movement into the properties. By the time we joined them all to those accesses, you, you kind of functionally end up with a third lane anyway. So that's something that we'll be taking back um, during the next stage of design to see whether or not that third lane to, um, I guess, improve access or facilitate access um, into those properties within Hagman Estate Industrial is warranted and whether or not we can accommodate that without um, too much of an impact to the properties themselves. Um, and again, that was a balance that we've had to um, had to work through on the other project to the west. Um, those service service roads, again, they're only two lanes in each direction, but um, if we had if we had to take more space to provide a third lane, um, in a number of cases it would have just had too much of an impact on, on the properties um, and then you kind of lose the benefit of what you were trying to provide. Um, then the last uh, little section of service road, if we pan back out and look at the area between um, the new 115th Street interchange and 127th Street, that's that service road, it's a single lane in each direction. The purpose of that service road um, is twofold. Uh, first, it's to provide access to CN Rails Walker Yards on the north side. So we did have to provide or replace the connection that exists there today. And what we ended up doing was continuing that same service road into the Hagman, um, Hagman Industrial Area to the side streets. So 123rd Street, 124th Street, 125th Street, and 126th. So if we if we had chosen not to, to extend the service road, it would really have, have ended up, um, we would be required to dead end those streets and provide turnarounds at the at the ends of all of those um, and like call the sacks at the end. And so again, by the time we kind of connect the two, um, it's a relatively short stretch between the CN access, which we're required to provide and connecting to those access to those side streets as well. Um, and what that does is just provide um, an alternate access to Hagman Estate Ind Industrial. Um, there is still access to the, that industrial area from 127th Street and 126th Avenue, but again, um, having that single lane service road um, uh, provides another outlet, I guess, and another option um, for trucks and um, commercial vehicles entering in that. So 
hopefully that clears it up again. It's, it varies quite a, quite a bit, but um, these plans are available online as well if, if you'd like to take a closer look at those. And I think okay. the next, oh, sorry, Andrew, I was just gonna say, I, I think the next question was related to, to wayfinding signage. Is that, is that right, Andrew? Is that, is that the uh, next given one? the Yellowhead Trail is part of the Trans-Canada 16 highway and handles tourist traffic will there be advanced signage uh, to direct travelers to the proper exit ramps i.e chateau nova hotel things like that good question so yeah no that's a that's a great question and i'll start answering it um and not to um put the spotlight <laughs> back on jolene um she can speak speak to wayfinding for the program overall, but the short answer is yes. We will be um, updating all of the side signage along the corridor as the projects are complete. Um, for instance, used uh, Chateau Nova as an example. So in that case, yes, where um, drivers would currently be able to exit, for instance, um, Yellowhead Trail and exit onto Saint, the St. Albert Trail overpass to access it that way. They'll now have to exit Yellowhead Trail eastbound earlier on in near 149th Street. So that exit will be appropriately signed. So you'll see the advance, uh, drivers would see the advanced signage saying um, access to St. Albert Trail here. Um, it is part of, we're looking at um, the signage on a project specific basis, but also um, from a program perspective as well. Um, there won't be, along Yellowhead itself, we won't have kind of signage to individual businesses, but the signage will be more for um, knowing how to get on and off of Yellowhead Trail. And then once um, once on the service roads, I think there's a bit more um, uh, detailed signage. But Jolene, do you mind just touching quickly upon upon wayfinding, like from for the program overall? Yeah, Carol, I think you've covered most of it. Uh, we recognized the need to have very clear wayfinding. Um, we don't want a cluttered highway, freeway, I suppose, that confuses people. So we developed a strategy at a program level that Carol mentioned, but each project, when they do their detailed design, um, works with our city operations team to ensure that appropriate signage is in place um, based on that uh, first start of that program wayfinding that describes the importance of, you know, what kind of signage are we putting up? Uh, you know, its purpose and is it in the right place? Are we overloading drivers? We've, we've looked at all those factors. Um, just to, to um, if anyone drives on yellow on White Mud Drive, you may have seen some similar um, configurations, especially service road configurations. Um, you can see the signage that they have up there. Um, in the 99th Street to 111th Street area, most of the access to those main crossing roads, such as 99th Street, uh, Gateway Boulevard, Calgary Trail, 106th Street and 111th Street, for the most part are through the service roads with a few on and off ramps, but not all directional at every crossing road. So it, it's a bit of a similar situation to what we've designed for Yellowhead Trail between 156th Street and 127th Street. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, I, why don't we shake things up? I just noticed that Greg Sokol's got his hand up. Greg, why don't you unmute yourself? You've got a couple questions. Uh, first question is, a number of years ago, we had a stakeholder consultation on 149th Street, and the group agreed, including Rob Jabbar's uh, group and the city, that there would be an overpass or underpass on 149th Street. Uh, now I see that that's totally changed, even though the recommendation by all the businesses in the area and various interest groups agreed to that. Um, why did we even have a stakeholder group if the city wasn't going to listen to us anyways? And second of all, what this will do, because we were directly affected by the 89th Street um, closure, our property value has dropped about 20%. So that means along 149th Street, there the businesses, their property values will decrease as well. I'm just a little disappointed because what was recommended by the group, and there was a fair amount of people that attended, was never even considered by the city. Comments? So I can speak a little bit to the history, Greg. Even though I wasn't part of the team from the city that developed that concept plan, I'm aware of, of some of the history. Um, you're right that a stakeholder input group was, was a key part of developing the concept plan. And that work 
took place over, you know, between two and three years. Um, from what I understand of the development of that concept, um, it was discovered that the alternatives for the interchange, given how close it is to 156th Street, would have two had two two constraints. There wasn't enough space for all directional access at 149th Street without shifting that intersection. Shifting that intersection meant impacting a lot of businesses and land. A full interchange was also, um, it was explored. I think there were two different interchange options that were explored. Um, and I believe the stakeholder group was included in those discussions uh, throughout, throughout the process. Again, I wasn't there a part of that team, so I can't say exactly when or for how long. But my understanding is the stakeholder group uh, saw those options as well. Um, and it was, it, the second impact was that the interchanges designed to be safe, provide all directional access, would wipe out a lot of the businesses that are on that frontage today. So essentially improving um, and providing that all directional connection at 149th Street would have wiped out enough businesses in that area that um, we're talking about you know, property values that that essentially um, the cost benefit for providing all directional access instead of um, the service roads that we that was they were landed on at the time, uh, it felt that this was a better option. So I, I, once again, I was not part of that planning study, but I do understand that it was completed and showed this service road option in 2014 and was presented to council. So this, this final result was arrived at before the concept plan was finalized and improved as part of that earlier work, 2013, 2014, in that time frame. It's just disappointed. I mean, I attended all those sessions on behalf of our company as well as the trucking industry, and you didn't listen to any of our considerations. The other concern I have is I understand with the closure of 89th Street, but there are serious uh, safety issues now at 82nd and 97th with the closure of 89th because um, now we have lineups on in the morning and, and at rush hour morning and afternoon on 82nd and 97th that are actually stopping traffic on Yellowhead Trail. So is that intent of the city now and um, to stop traffic on Yellowhead as opposed to a through fare? Because it's happening every day. And the other question I have is, um, when we had tried to address that, when we had the stakeholder meetings on 89th Street and some of the other development, we were told by city officials that they didn't care about the on-ramps or the off-ramps. All they worried about is making Yellowhead Trail a through fare. So are they going to wait till somebody dies or there's a serious accident before something's done with it? Because there were opportunities to change some of those uh, off and on-ramps to make it safer for the motoring public. We're, we're definitely not ignoring those locations, Greg, absolutely. We recognize that those ramps have always been quite congested during peak hours. And it might be more apparent now that there's free flowing traffic through the 89th Street intersection in the westbound movement, for example, as you approach 97th Street, that used to meter the traffic a little bit. And so what you see now is, is potentially a result of the fact that that traffic doesn't have to stop in that westbound direction at 89th Street anymore and just continues straight through to 97th Street. We, as a program, are looking, we have a program model and grant, you know, you're telling us anecdotally through your experience today that you're seeing that. Our program model has also identified some of these, um, these slowdowns, these peak hour congestion issues, um, which we will report on to um, provide information to the overall city capital program. And that can then be prioritized to see what changes might um, be um, scheduled into that capital program to address these issues. It'll help set priorities for the city for some of this um, growth work and improvements to address concerns. This is being recorded. It definitely is feedback we will continue to carry into and into programming for city capital projects.
But the problem is you don't listen because, you know, I spent a fair amount of time at, uh, on 149th Street and there were a, a numerous citizens from all the affected areas. If you close 149th Street, all you're going to do is put more traffic on St. Albert Trail, put more traffic on 127th Street. And those aren't really true truck traffic north-south. I mean, St. Albert isn't bad, but uh, 127th Street is only for local access. What you're going to do is put tractor-trailer combinations on there where it should have been thought out that 149th Street would uh, resolve some of that so we wouldn't have, you know, between our industry and the, and the uh, public, you know, some of the concerns about noise and all the other issues. Maybe, Julie, finding can... a, a good balance solution is tough, Greg. We we recognize that. Um, we have to ensure that, that um, we provide safe movement on Yellowhead Trail as part of the program. Um, I'm sorry, Chris, I think you, I might have interrupted you stepping in. No, go ahead, Julie. You got it. I was just going to support yeah, you. Yeah, and we, we did recognize that closing 149th Street, as I mentioned during the presentation, would mean a little bit more traffic um, maybe even not just a little bit, but more traffic um, on the parallel roads as an alternative. Um, I don't know that a lot of traffic, if they can't get on at 149th Street, would travel all the way to 127th Street. I, I, I'm not a, a driver or a regular professional driver, um, but I, I do anticipate that the opportunities we have for access from the service roads should provide a, a good opportunity for drivers to get onto and off of Yellowhead Trail before having to take uh, very circuitous, circuitous detours as far as 127th Street. And Greg, I, I do appreciate your, your historical involvement and your continued input for these movements. Again, we're not professional drivers, and so this type of input does help us. And we've done our best to mitigate some of those impacts in the immediate future with our program, recognizing that there may need to be changes in the future as opportunities for re rehabilitation occur um, and as larger program projects are planned. Yeah, my only last comment would be that because of some of the lack of consultation between the city and the businesses along there, what's going to happen? And, and you notice it, especially in Atchison, those areas are growing like crazy and people are moving out of the city. So there's a tax issue and you've got numerous businesses that I've talked to that are, you know, employ 500 people that are moving out of the city. Well, that's all revenue lost in the city, but there doesn't seem to be any concern about that. But I mean, that's, that's the only comment I'll make. Thank you, Greg. Okay, the next comment in the chat windows are, the car count is extremely high in those areas. I'm worried about the traffic will back up and stop the flow as it does on uh, Yellowhead now in 97th. Are there any alternative routes and or new truck routes being planned? So I can jump in here a bit. I, I did see that question pop up and I think it was in relation to when I was talking about the service roads and the number of lanes. So um, I'm, not, I'm not sure specifically with where the question is, but I, I guess what I would suggest um, or what, what I can offer is that um, we do recognize uh, current, uh, the design is based on current and projected traffic volumes um, up to 2050. Um, as Julene noted, sometimes that, that um, we are looking at the overall network as well. So areas like, um, like Yellowhead Trail and 97th Street, um, which although they're already kind of at a, uh, freeway standard being being grade separated at that, that location. We're not um, proposing any specific improvements, but as for the concept plan itself between St. Albert Trail and 97th Street, um, the the current and projected traffic counts are are being considered in in the solution. Um, we did, um, as far as concerns for traffic backup, just to use an example. Um, if you look at the section between St. Albert Trail and 127th Street, one of the options that we were looking at back in the fall, um, that was option two out of three that we presented, um, had in, instead of service road connections between St. Albert Trail and 127th Street, um, it had just uh, the simple ramp configurations on both of those interchanges. But what we found was that um, they're, they're very closely spaced interchanges. Um, and if you looked at, for instance, if you're traveling westbound, um, like an off ramp, sorry, an on ramp from St. Albert Trail to Yellowhead Trail, and then the distance between that and an on ramp, on ramp 
between Yellowhead to 127th Street. Um, it was a very, very short weave distance, and we were concerned with exactly what this question notes about traffic backing up from the ramps onto the freeway itself. Um, it was kind of, a, we were able to provide the minimum distance to design standards, but we felt that if there was, um, when we looked at the traffic model and we found that even uh, kind of a slight difference between um, what our projections are, would could potentially result in those kinds of backups. And that's why you see that service road connection between San Alvaro Trail and 127th Street. Um, so again, I'm not sure if that's specifically what the question was, was looking at that section, but just to provide an example of um, how we do consider or how we've tried to consider um, current projected traffic volumes um, and balance the desire to get on and off of Yellowhead Trail kind of in a uh, fairly regular fashion with um, Yellowhead Trail actually um, functioning to its best capacity. So hopefully that somewhat answers the question. And just one last thing, Carol, uh, will Danish routes be up, dangerous goods routes be updated? So I'm guessing that trucks are going to have to take some alternative routes and things like that. Would the city be looking at uh, uh, the high volume areas there and what can be done? Um, I, I can start this out as, as well, and I apologize. I have the chat open and I didn't answer the second part of the previous question, which um, are whether or not new truck routes are being planned. So it's a bit, it's a similar answer to will dangerous goods routes be updated? So as part of the freeway conversion program, um, we, we're not specifically looking at or tasked with updating um, truck routes or dangerous goods routes kind of with the program. The objective is really to get Yellowhead Trail to that freeway standard. So at present, we haven't um, proposed any updates or changes to those routes. Um, and to be honest, maybe either Jolene or Chris or even Mike would know. I, I actually don't know what the process would be um, if there was a desire to do that. Um, I actually don't know what that process would look like, to be perfectly honest. Okay, uh, maybe something we can think about for the future um, for some conversations. Are there any last questions? Okay, I don't see any. Um, this was an awesome, awesome time that we had to kind of understand better where we are with the final planning and where things are going. Uh, I really appreciate Carol, Jolene, Chris, all of your times. Um, this is a big change for Edmonton, but I also think, you know, as much as it hampers things, it is a good chance of launching us forward in many ways too. So lots of concerns, but I'm sure lots of positives to come too. Um, Chris, would you like uh, to come in with any final comments from the city's perspective? No, uh, well, yes, I guess uh, I just want to thank for the invite. It's always good to get out and talk to industry to get their um, their opinion, their input. Um, I, I agree with you. Um, there's going to be some pain uh, through this process. I understand that. We do appreciate that. But I think at the end of the day, uh, it's it's a benefit to the city. And, you know, just going back to Greg's point about, you know, businesses sort of leaving the corridor. And, and this is why we're doing this, right? Like we are doing this for the corridor. Like we want to bring business back to the corridor. The, you know, the more efficient or reliable reliability of the corridor to bring people in and out of the corridor, we, we think that's a benefit to companies like yourselves and, and uh, the communities as well. So we, we want businesses to stay. We're not, we're not driving them out, uh, but there are sort of the, the balance between the roadway requirements, communities and, and businesses uh, that you all belong to. So again, just thank you very much. Thanks to my team. They do a top notch job all the time. They come out and they do all the heavy lifting. So really, and if you have concerns, questions, reach out to us. Like we're here all day long and, um, you know, we want to work with uh, the teams here to see what we can do. And, and it's your guys' sort of on the road experience that informs us on, on a lot of our decisions. So please, thank you again. And, and please uh, reach out to us and we're, we're happy to have the conversation. Thanks, Andrew. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, again, for attending this conversation today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.